When preparing to have a major surgery, you can't just walk into the operating room immediately after your consultation and succumb to anesthesia. There's checklists to accomplish to ensure your body is prepped for surgery. Let's jump right into how to prevent your brand new RC airplane from flatlining in the OR during its maiden flight via a pre-maiden flight checklist from the Marymore RC Club. First up, firewall forward, the engine or motor zone. Start with your airplane powered off and turn on your transmitter. Verifying that the device that tells your airplane what to do has a proper charge is a big deal, so let's make sure it has enough caffeine. Like your wife, your transmitter is always right. If it says it's almost dead, trust it. Next, we'll make sure that your motor or engine is secure. Do so by gently grasping the prop hub and the fuse at the same time and try and softly wiggle it left and right and up and down. So long as there's no movement, you're safe. Just don't try and rip it off the plane. Be gentle. While you're handling that prop hub, make sure the prop and spinner are securely mounted as well. Electronics wise, make sure all your servos are securely mounted, your wires don't look like your boss's crappy computer wiring setup, and that your flight pack or fuel tank is securely mounted. The last thing we want is the battery shifting to the back of the airplane mid-flight. Push rods should also be checked for a secure installation with all clevises properly connected to the servo and control arms. Onto the tail section. In the same way you would give your fast food meal a condition inspection for signs of fingernails before taking a bite, so too will we verify our tail section is in good shape before taking flight. Verify the tail is securely mounted, the geometry checks out, in other words, no crooked vertical or horizontal stabs, and your control surfaces and hinges are secure and aren't bound up. As with most kids nowadays, servos don't want to work hard if they don't have to either. Keep them spoiled and free from stress. Now, the part of the plane that does the bulk of the work for you, the wing or wings, whatever makes your plane happy. When checking your wing, same deal goes as with the tail section. Look for any Burger King foot lettuce. Make sure that the control surfaces are properly hinged and secure, are aligned, aren't bound up, and your spar and struts are installed if either or is required for your plane. If you have a two-piece wing, make sure you have both pieces. Unless you want to end up like the OG one-wing landing boy, Jim Burke. He's a nice guy, by the way, with roots in RC flying. Check out this cool flyby he gave us as we were climbing out of an airport in Montana one summer. Center of gravity. This one could have an entire video on its own. Let's put it this way. Ever seen a party boat capsized from too many people being loaded onto one side? The same thing can happen before you go to party with your RC plane. Prevent an airborne party foul and always reference your aircraft manual to verify that the plane is balanced within limits. A quick note, be sure that you balance low wing aircraft inverted. For larger planes, get a couple folks together to lift the plane on each wingtip at the proper CG point. Teamwork. Last but not least, the final power on checks. This one is pretty in depth, but to keep it simple for this video, make sure everything on your plane that is controlled by your transmitter functions properly. Ensure that your prop is removed during this check if you're inside, or if you're outside with the prop on, be sure to have the plane tied down and or on a test stand to prevent an unwanted departure to a very likely death from that sharp blade. When props fly off, they fly off straight ahead. Keep any persons or objects away from the front of the plane. A quick summary of the overall checks here are things like servo reversing, servo travel, adding expo if needed, making sure the motor is properly armed, among others. Check out the video description for the full Marymore pre-maiden flight checklist. You'll definitely want to reference it before a maiden flight. We'd like to take a second to address the topic of setting up servo travel on your airplane before a maiden flight. In our experience, we've found that many folks tend to get wrapped around the axle about making sure their control surfaces deflect exactly to what the manual says within the nearest nanometer. These folks also don't tend to realize that the deflections shown in manuals are suggested deflections, not written in stone. Our favorite not armchair engineer, Woody, has some thoughts on this as well. Woody, what would you say to anyone who is getting their heart rates up, worrying their plane will crash from not having control throws set exactly to the manual? You're setting up your RC plane. I get it, you love to follow the rules. Before you get carried away and get all hung up on control throws, you gotta have enough control throw to maneuver the airplane and have some flexibility with the center of gravity. High control throws will make your controls more sensitive. For beginners, it's often better to have a less responsive airplane. Although there's a secret for that too. Spoiler alert, it's called exponential and it's probably already built into your fancy 21st century transmitter. RC planes are very light and very strong compared to real jumbo jetliners. So you have a ton more structural strength than you need most of the time. So take advantage of that strength and the expo feature and have some confidence to experiment with your control throws. Thanks, Woody. The way that we set up our control throws to ensure the servos stay happy comes in two easy steps. The first step requires your eye and the second, your ears. Increase travel on each control surface incrementally until you see the control surface stop continuing to move. Eyeballs used, check. At about the same time, you may hear the servo binding a bit. It sounds like this. Eardrums used. 
check. Once you've got the travel to this point, reduce the travel by five to 10 clicks and then leave it there. This is to reduce stress on your servos. Adjust your throws down from there and add expo as needed. For your maiden flight, we strongly suggest flying on high rates with a fair amount of expo. It may sound crazy to suggest high rates, but if you have a good amount of expo in your radio, you won't end up over controlling your plane, at least hopefully. For beginners, we understand that that may be intimidating, so only do what you're comfortable with. But here's our rationale to this, aside from Woody's reasoning. Throughout our time in the hobby, we've learned that it's always better to have something and not need it than to need something and not have it. This applies directly to control surface deflection while in critical phases of flight. As a quick example, let's say we go to takeoff for our maiden flight in low or mid rates because we wanted to be conservative. Suddenly, right after we take off, our battery slides forward and our CG is now way ahead of where it should be. This will make any amount of up elevator input much less effective. Why? Think teeter-totters. The chihuahua on one end is your up elevator input, and the Great Dane on the other end is the nose of your airplane. This is exaggerated depending on the scenario, but you get the idea. Returning to the takeoff scenario, as we are struggling to maintain a climb attitude from our Ford CG, we remember that we have lots of extra elevator travel. Have no fear, high rates are here. Click in high rates, and your day may be saved via having the ability to overcome that Great Dane at the front of your airplane. This will allow you the controllability to get it back onto the ground to reposition your battery. Always be thinking ahead of the plane. And now, onto the final pre-flight check with the power on, range checks, and fail-safe setup. These are another pair of to-do items that will have a video of their own, but rest assured, they are important items to complete before a maiden flight. As a quick summary, fail-safe is something that essentially tells your plane what to do in the event your transmitter decides to break up with your receiver without any warning. Kind of like your last girlfriend. Rip. Let's avoid that. Make sure that you follow your radio's manual to verify it's set up right as it varies from one brand of radio to the next. Range checks are the other important task. To sum up a range check in layman's terms, would you ever drive a car on a road trip with a fuel gauge that didn't work so you'd have no idea if you'd ever get to your destination before running out of gas? Range checks are just as crucial. If you don't have the required connection strength between your transmitter and your receiver before flying, you won't be making it any further than just beyond the takeoff point before inadvertently ending up pretty short of your destination. Avoid this one and be sure to perform your range check per your transmitter's manual. It's now time to maiden our airplane, but we've run out of time to cover it at the level of detail we'd like to in this video. Stay tuned for our next video on maiden flight airborne tips. If you want to ensure a takeoff with proper servo reversing, consider hitting the like button. If you want to guarantee you have the control throw you need, even if you might not need it, press that subscribe button. Happy landings. Bounce one on for us. See you next time with a new upload.